In this video, we will be discussing how graphene filters can be used for water desalination. Having access to clean water is a necessity, just like food, clothing, and shelter. Currently, 1 billion people around the world lack access to clean water, a number that is predicted to double in the next 25 years. Some may think this is not a problem in the U.S., but with the recent drought in California, Americans have cause to worry as well. Due to high financial energy construction and operating costs, reclaimed seawater via current desalination processes is not a feasible way to build up reserve water supplies in places facing droughts. Since 97% of the Earth's water is in the oceans and seas, water desalination, the process of removing salt and typically other contaminants from water in order to obtain fresh water, should be an obvious investment. This process is typically done through some sort of filtration where water passes through a barrier, catching the salt and other contaminants. However, significant energy and financial costs limit desalination's ability to contribute to the world's reserve water supply. Currently, 12,500 desalination plants in 120 countries produce less than 1% of the global water supply. Currently, the most common method for water desalination is a process called reverse osmosis. The naturally occurring process of osmosis is when water flows through a membrane from areas of low concentration of contaminant to high concentration of contaminant. Reverse osmosis is the opposite process in which salt water is actively forced through a semi-permeable membrane to move the water out of an area containing high concentration of salt in order to produce fresh water. This video shows the process of reverse osmosis. The salty water is now forced by high pressure through filters to remove salt. This immense pressure is equal to nearly 100 elephants standing on the area of a manhole, varying between 4.1 million and 8.3 million pascals. That's crazy. Depending on the area through which the water is forced, the energy required is very large to sustain this process. In order to produce that much energy and thus fresh water, it is very costly, 10 times more than regular municipal water. Furthermore, reverse osmosis requires nearly constant maintenance and monitoring to ensure the membranes are not clogged, adding to the operating costs already high in energy and money. What if there was a better, more efficient way to do the same desalination process? What if it was even cooler and on the nanoscale? This might be possible. To give you a little more background on the new wonder material graphene, it is a two-dimensional carbon allotrope produced from graphite and diamond, only a single atom layer of carbon atoms thick, that are bonded in a hexagonal honeycomb structure. Since diffusion flux varies inversely with membrane thickness, graphene at one carbon atom thick is the ultimate membrane to produce high flux, or high water permeability. The decrease in friction is due to the membrane's thickness, or rather thinness, which only increases the permeability. Graphene is the most stable form for carbon, meaning that graphite, which is composed of many layers of graphene, is metastable. This makes graphene very strong compared to its super light mass, and the bonds between the carbon atoms are very difficult to break, with a tensile stiffness of 150 million psi. This ability to withstand high stresses, or forces per area, means that graphene can withstand a large amount of pressure as the filter stretches when the water is forced through at high fluxes. As you can probably imagine by now, producing graphene sheets alone is still a relatively expensive process, but has been improving rapidly over the past few years. Initially, to produce graphene, it was peeled off of graphite using an adhesive layer by layer. This technique is an incredibly long and tedious process, not suitable to produce the amount of graphene required for use in a desalination plant. Research into graphene for desalination at MIT, however, has led to a method for producing graphene much more cheaply and quickly that has optimized the quality of graphene for desalination while still being efficient in both time, money, and labor. This process uses a chemical technique involving placing graphite into a low temperature chemical solution that breaks apart the graphene into graphene sheets. This chemical process to create graphene actually produces graphene oxide rather than just graphene. Research in desalination found a way to use this oxide to their advantage to help create uniform pores in the membrane. Pores of precise size between 0.8 and 1.6 nanometers must be created to allow the graphene sheet to filter water while stopping the passage of salt molecules. While researchers do not currently agree on the optimal way to produce these pores repeatedly across entire graphene sheets, one of the most common processes to create this property is through an oxygen plasma etching process. Exposure to oxygen plasma creates pores or defects in the graphene membrane whose size can be controlled. Producing graphene with these perfectly sized pores is attainable using this method. Large amounts of research have shown the possibility of using graphene membranes to desalinate water similar to the reverse osmosis process. This video shows salt water passing through a graphene membrane 
The minuscule thickness of one carbon atom sheet also allows water to flow through the perforated graphene membrane with less friction, which greatly increases the speed of the flow over traditional membranes used to filter out salts. Furthermore, graphene membranes could be swapped with existing membranes used and would not require the constant maintenance and replacing due to becoming fouled with biogrowth that current membranes experience, which greatly increases the operating efficiency of the plants. Using graphene filters has been proven to have been more effective and cheaper for desalination than current methods. The one atom thick graphene filters increases water flux through the membrane, making the process faster. The thinness also reduces the amount of energy lost due to friction during desalination. This ability to handle high water pressure while remaining highly permeable to selected molecules translates to using 15% less energy for seawater and 50% less energy for brackish water if, the implemented, if implemented at desalination plants. Another advantage of using graphene is that it doesn't get easily fouled with biogrowth. This eliminates the need to constantly clean and replace filters, decreasing labor costs and allowing plants to run at full efficiency for a longer period of time. In addition, plastic polyamide filters, which are used currently at desalination plants, need to be regularly cleaned with chlorine. The chlorine wears away the polyamide filters very quickly, creating the need to constantly replace filters. Graphene is chemically resistant to the damaging effects of chlorine, which reduces the need to constantly replace the filters and slow production. While graphene is still not cheap to produce, the associated costs are becoming more affordable at a rapid rate. Rather than constantly spending large quantities of money constructing desalination plants, governments and desalination industries should invest in graphene filters to replace the plastic polyamide filters. As shown in the graph above, graphene membranes have similar, if not better, salt rejection rates while obtaining a water permeability of two to three orders of magnitude higher. Since they are able to be swapped at existing desalination plants, graphene filters would enable the construction of smaller, more affordable desalination plants in smaller communities or countries by reducing the turnaround time in planning and construction, as well as decreasing the complexity of keeping the plant running. Graphene membranes for water filtration have sh been shown to work on small scales in laboratory research, but more research and testing is needed before this technology can be implemented commercially or on a large scale in communities. However, as we have shown, graphene's unique structure processing properties paradigm give it a very high potential to be a new alternative for water desalination by reducing energy, financial, and labor costs.